There are fish, big fish. Come on, baby. Nice one. Nice one. Yeah, nice. That right there is exactly why we spinner fish. Well, that was my first spinner fish of the day, and that's what this video was all about. Spinner fishing for trout. Spinners have been around for a long time, and they continue to catch trout day in and day out. They're one of the best baits you can use, if not the best. In this video, I'm gonna go through all the details you need to know to fish these baits properly. So let's get into it. I've been fishing spinners for trout since I was a little kid. We've got rainbows, we've got brook trout, we've got browns. They all love spinners, but there is definitely some things you need to know before you go and just start casting these things in the river. Specifically, I'm gonna be talking primarily about creeks, rivers, flowing water today, but a lot of this stuff will apply for still water and lakes as well. A spinner is basically any kind of blade that spins around a shaft. Typically, there's a treble hook attached and some sort of weight in the center part of the spinner to keep it down. Uh, this is called an inline spinner. It's pretty much the only kind that really gets used a lot for trout. You know, spinner baits are more of a bass thing and weight forward spinners are kind of a walleye thing. So uh, this is the typical style. This is a MEPS right here, Aglia number four. Very, very common spinner. And it's got all of the components of your typical trout spinner. You got a hook, a weight, a couple brass beads, and then you have what's called the clevis right here. That, that's what the blade spins on and then the blade itself and then the shaft is just this wire piece in the middle. So now that we know what a spinner is, let's go over a few of the things that, that kind of differentiate the spinners from each other. So let's start with size. So these two spinners are two different brands. They're both size three, and that's kind of referring to the size of the Colorado blade. So this is a Blue Fox Vibrax, and this is a Meps Aglia. They're very similar blade styles. Now a rooster tail, on the other hand, is going to be sized by weight. So this is a quarter ounce rooster tail. There's an eighth ounce rooster tail. You know, so they size them by actually the weight that they're built as. Now, these do have different size blades for the weights, but that's kind of the only way you can, can size those. Now, this is a Panther Martin spinner, which has a completely different type of blade on it. And this one is sized by numbers as well, but they're completely different than these maps. This is a relatively similar size spinner as this number three, but it's called the number six. Uh, it kind of depends on what brand you're using as far as the sizing goes. The range that you're gonna be dealing with is somewhere from like a size five maps, which would be for steelhead, salmon, you know, really big inland trout, all the way down to these tiny little Panther Martins. And you know, these are small enough to catch the smallest brook trout in any stream. So all kinds of sizes and you just have to experiment and kind of see what works for a witch. Most of the time, I would say, to keep it simple, I'm fishing quarter ounce rooster tails or eighth ounce rooster tails, number three maps, number three blue fox, and like, you know, any size of the Panther Martins really. Um, I, I kind of switch it up on those quite a bit. And that pretty much covers the sizing for spinners. All right, let's get into blade style. So the most common blade would be your Colorado blade, like on this Vibrax Blue Fox. It's a much broader blade than the others, and it spins very easily in the water. Kind of the broader the blade, the easier it's gonna spin. So you don't have to move it as fast or get it into as fast a current to get that blade spinning. You can slow roll it, and it works really, really well. So the next style of blade we have is called the Willow Leaf. And the Willow Leaf blade doesn't have as much surface area, so it takes a little bit more speed to keep it going but you're also going to run a little bit deeper because there's less water resistance on a willow leaf blade so you put a heavy spinner and a willow leaf blade together that's going to be your best combo for getting deeper and you may have to retrieve it a little faster but it works really really well to get down in those deeper holes the third style of blade which is very common on panther martins is sort of a, a willow leaf blade that's actually got a hole in the middle and rotates directly around the shaft without a clevis. Now this offers the opportunity to use a willow leaf blade, but not to have so much speed to it. This actually rotates easier than it would with a clevis. So you can slow roll a Panther Martin, even though it's got a willow leaf blade and you can get them a little bit deeper. So that's kind of your three styles. You've got your Colorado with the clevis, your willow leaf with the clevis, which runs a little bit deeper, needs a little more speed. And then you've got your Panther Martin style where the blade actually 
rotates directly around the shaft of the bait. And uh, that one's kind of a, a nice combination between the two. So um, now as far as mixing your weights and your blades go, you know, like I said, if you want to slow roll a bait deep, you need a heavy bait like this Blue Fox Vibrax. That Colorado blade is stumping down there and it wants to pull the bait up. So this weight on here, uh, the Blue Fox really keeps that down a little bit. Whereas your MEPS, you know, has just a little bit of brass on it. It's not a huge weight. So that big Colorado blade with less weight is gonna be great for fishing those shallower areas where you want that bait to stay up in the water column. And then again, the rooster tail with that heavy quarter ounce weight and a light willow leaf blade is very, very good at getting deeper into those deeper pools. As far as body style goes, there's a few different types. This one that has a teardrop shaped body as well as the Blue Fox Vibrax. A little more resistance, uh, but a little bit bulkier profile in the water. And then you've got, of course, your rooster tails, which have a very narrow pencil style weight uh, body, but it does add some bulk. And then you've got your bead style bodies, like on this Vibrax here. You've got just the brass and then the beads. They're not super heavy, they're kind of plasticky beads. Then you got your brass weight right here. Just adds a little shine, a little bulk. And a lot of these spinners you'll see have a, a red kind of tubing on the treble hook there that kind of extends the body or extends the look of the body a little bit further back. Depending on the day, I'll sometimes cut that off and move the profile forward a little bit. And that seems to work really well on certain days, especially when the fish are a little more short biting. But I don't really consider that plastic a dressing. I consider it kind of an extension of the body. You know, that's, that's really it. You've got your bead style, your pencil style, and your teardrop style. And that pretty much covers most of the spinner bodies. They're, they really do the same thing. They just add bulk and weight and profile to the bait. And I, in my opinion, it's not the biggest key to the bait, uh, although the, the color itself can definitely be a key, which we'll get into next. So color for spinners is very important. However, it's not a science. And, you know, as far as I can tell, on bright sunny days, I like to use more muted colors, more natural colors. On cloudy days in clear water, I typically am gonna use a little bit more shiny like brass or copper colors. On cloudy days in dingy water, that's when I go to the really bright shiny colors to try and get as much flash as I can. And also the fluorescence like the pinks, the oranges, you know, that sort of thing to get that, give that bait a lot more visibility. But I've had really good luck fishing very, very muted colors in most conditions like this copper, black, and red. That's a good one for me. Another one I use quite a bit would be just a black with a black blade. Um, and then, you know, if I'm gonna go shiny colors, I like coppers and golds. I re rarely, rarely use silver uh, on the whole bait. I really like copper. And maybe that's just the area I'm in, you know, up here, we don't have a lot of silvery bait fish like they would in the Great Lakes, you know? So maybe some of those lake run fish, you'd use more of a silver color. But like this color here is one I'd use in really, really dingy water on a dark day. It's got silver a little bit here. And then you've got a chartreuse kind of reflector on the back of the blade and a bright pink body on it. And that's gonna really show up as much as possible. One of my best spinners of all time has been this Neps right here. And that's got kind of the brown trout pattern on the blade. So it's a gold blade, but it's got a little bit of paint on it. So it's not too obtrusive, just a brass body and a gold blade. Super plain, but a little bit of paint. I don't like it totally gold in bright conditions. So that brown trout color has been really good. And I'll, I'll leave uh, links in the description for a lot of this stuff so you can pick it up, you know, my favorites. Um, one other thing that I do at times, if I want to alter the color, so let's say, let's say I've got this plain Vibrax right here with some gold, it's just all gold, right? Say I want to add some black to the blade so I don't want it super shiny. I can actually take a Sharpie here and I can put some dots on that blade or I can actually put like a spotted pattern or I can actually put stripes on it like that. And that's gonna give it a little bit of a pattern and it's gonna make it a little more dull so the fish don't see just that huge bright flash. Or I can black out the entire blade too and really make it, um, really make it dark. So I really like to carry that marker with me, that Sharpie, and that kind of gives me a little bit more options when it comes to coloring my baits and my blades. 
Okay, now let's get into dressing. Uh, dressing would be what is on the hook. So a lot of these baits are undressed, but some of them have that dressing. And that, again, extends the profile of the bait back. And your typical materials are going to be bucktail, like on this maps here. You got some flashy blue, like on this uh, blue fox vibrax here. Um, the rooster tails actually have a little bit of hackle on them. Uh, that kind of just a very thin profile. It's not a heavy profile. And it kind of spreads out a little bit. Looks really good in the water. And then a uh, third option is actually some kind of marabou, which has a really flowy look to it. And any kind of dressing that you put on a bait is gonna make the profile longer and is gonna make the fish tend to strike a little shorter. So if they're not super aggressive, I tend to go with just an undressed bait like this, and that makes them kind of strike more forward. But if they're super aggressive and they want a big profile, uh, that's when you wanna to go to that dressing on there, and that can add some bulk and some flow to the bait on a bigger bait especially, make it look a little more realistic, look like a big meal for that fish. And that's when I go to typically some kind of dressing. Now, I prefer using a lighter dressing like hackle, like on these rooster tails. I'll use that just about any time because it doesn't add a lot of bulk. Um, you know, the bucktails really add bulk to the bait and they also slow the bait down. So you're, the more you add to this hook, the more it's gonna slow down and wanna rise up. So it's not gonna run as deep either with any kind of dressing on it. And again, that thin dressing on a rooster tail really doesn't add a lot of drag. So it doesn't tend to pull the bait up as much. There's a lot to the dressing, but on most days, I like to go plain, no dressing. It's just kind of my preferred method. I, I just don't think the dressing adds a lot to the bait most of the time. And I've had really good luck with undressed spinners. So that's typically my go-to. Now one little trick that I've found works really, really well on these spinners is to add one of these VMC flicker trebles on the back and that just adds a little willow leaf off that back treble. Looks sweet in the water, gives the fish something a little bit different they haven't seen before. And that's a sort of a dressing, but not really a dressing technically. But I've found in pressured areas where fish have seen a lot of spinners, that can be a really nice little addition. I just put a little split ring on there and add that little kicker blade on the back. And uh, that's been a really good option for me um, to put a few more trout in the bag that might not have hit otherwise. So a uh, nice little tip for you. And I'll leave a link for these little VMC trebles down below so you can pick them up as well. So that pretty much covers spinners and kind of what they do. Now let's get into the tackle I'm using to throw these spinners. For most of the bigger spinners from size two and up, I'm gonna throw them on a, a seven foot medium light fast action rod. This is a St. Croix. Legend Elite. This is an awesome rod for throwing spinners. It's got you know, a fairly fast tip, so you can get into that hook set really quick, and just enough give to kind of let the fish grab that bait and pull it in, uh, but a nice stiff backbone for fighting those fish. I like to have a fairly decent heavy rod when I'm throwing bigger spinners because I like to get those trout out away from a lot of that cover I'm throwing up to. So. Now on that trout rod, I've got a 2500 Daiwa XLR. It's a really nice reel for this. Really nice drag, nice and light. It's great size, 2500 is perfect for most trout situations. I'm gonna spool that reel with 10 pound high-vis braid. High-vis braid is super important because you wanna be able to see where your line is going and where that bait is in relation to cover and structure. Uh, now of course, I am gonna tie a leader on that braid so that the fish can't see the line. And I'm gonna tie about a six to eight foot liter of eight pound test, typically fluorocarbon. And I'm gonna tie that with an FG knot. An FG knot is the thinnest line to line knot that I've ever found. It goes through the guides beautifully. You don't need to worry about it hanging up on the end of your rod. And that gives you the ability to have a nice long meter section so the fish aren't seeing that braided line. Now, as far as how I fish a spinner, a spinner has to have some sort of swivel on it, right? And I like to tie my swivel up ahead of my spinner. I don't like a whole lot of extra tackle attached to my spinner. So I don't like a big snap swivel on the front of it. I like to keep it very simple to just a very small snap so I can make quick changes on my spinner. Uh, and then about a foot and a half up the line, maybe a foot, I'm gonna tie a low profile ball bearing swivel. And that's gonna keep me from getting a bunch of line twist. And it's gonna keep that, that extra bulk of that swivel away from the bait. Uh, that's just how I prefer to fish them. And then I oftentimes downsize my line on this section to six pound, just to give it a little extra 
um, visibility reduction in that last bit of leader section. And also, if you hang up and snag, you're more likely to break that leader section off than you are your entire leader or back at the FG knot with that heavier, that heavier uh, fluorocarbon. So that's my setup. Uh, braid to leader to swivel to a short piece of a little bit lighter line and to a snap to your spinner at the end. And uh, that's all thrown on a seven foot medium light fast action rod. And again, I'll leave a link in the description for all this stuff. So that's pretty much it for the tackle that I'm throwing this on as well as the spinners themselves. So now we have to get into how are we gonna approach the river. So I'm fishing a mid-sized river today. I'm gonna show you how I approach each hole and run and kind of how I approach casting in a river and whether you know we're gonna cast across stream, upstream, downstream, and when I do each and kind of the speeds that I retrieve at. So uh, let's get into that now and uh, see if we can catch a couple fish in the meantime. There's really three types of water that you're fishing when you're fishing a river, and that would be faster water like riffles, and then runs, which are longer, a little bit slower, deeper sections, and then pools, which are the big, you know, deep areas. Oftentimes they're kind of in a, a riffle run pool scenario as you work your way down the river, but they can kind of mix themselves up any which way. So when it comes to fishing faster water and riffles, I'm looking for the slower pockets on the side of the river uh, or behind a rock where that water slows down and where it's the deepest in that riffle system. And you learn to read the water and you cast upstream and retrieve your spinner across and down through those areas. Another spot you wanna look for in faster water is any overhanging cover or wood cover that those fish can get underneath. And you wanna pitch it upstream and bring it past it or underneath that wood cover. That's your best bet for fishing that faster water. And usually slow rolling it, just keeping the bait going is perfect because you're retrieving downstream oftentimes as you work your way upstream and you don't want that bait moving too fast. Now once you hit a run, my favorite way is to start at the bottom of the run and cast across and retrieve, slightly upstream and retrieve, slightly more upstream and retrieve, and work my way all the way to basically coming down the same side I'm on at a parallel with the river. And that pretty much covers the whole run. You might need to move into two sections to actually cover the whole thing efficiently, but I never want to retrieve in a run uh, upstream. I may let it swing on that 90 degree across current and swing down through the tail of the hole a little bit with that blade swinging, but I don't want to actually cast downstream and retrieve it because the water is going to be moving too fast. The only place that I'll throw downstream is in a pool. Now in a pool, you're gonna typically have water coming into the middle and then there's gonna be some calmer water on the sides, often even dead still water. And you can cast any direction in that still water and bring it through there. And then still on the current part of the pool, you wanna throw it up current and bring it down through. And oftentimes that's where you wanna to switch to those heavier baits like the rooster tails to get that, um, get that bait down there a little bit closer to the bottom in those deeper pools. And if you really need to get deeper, you can add a split shot and get that split shot ahead of the bait and that'll help it get even deeper in that pool. All right guys, that's pretty much it for how to fish spinners for trout. I hope you enjoyed this video. I got a lot more, including videos on how to clean trout, how to cook trout. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Here's another video for you. and We'll catch you next time.